mermaid Wait. tail. You look inside and you think you managed to nail down who Roland was talking about. It seems to be uh, quite a young uh, gentleman in his early 20s, no doubt. Uh, he's got uh, short blonde hair and uh, emerald green eyes. He seems to be very well mannered as he's sitting at the tavern. He actually seems like he's a little uncomfortable being surrounded uh, by so many people. Almost like he's a little bit on edge and all that. By his clothes, you can probably tell that uh, his family is probably... They're probably not wealthy, but they seem to be well off since he's uh, dressed very respect respectably. Almost like he doesn't belong in a tavern, actually. <sighs> Fine, I'll go in. But I'm not having a date with him. I'm explaining that Roland likes to set me up on these dates. And okay, I'll as you get walk to know him in and you approach friend. his table, what do you do? Um... I guess I'll just say hello. Mm, hello. What? 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 Huh? No, that wasn't in character. But did he actually say hello like that? Yes. He said mm, hello <laughs> like that. Yes. What? Okay. Um. Just be there on. Uh, since you went quiet for a moment, he looks confused. Mm, can I help you? I guess I'll just... Um... Hello. <laughs> Roland. Mm, who? Okay. My apologies. I... I think I'm... Hmm... Mm, that's quite alright, my dear. Why don't you sit down and we can share a drink? I sit down. Oh god! <laughs> <laughs> I mm, quite splendid! Uh, barmaid, this way please! He waves over. And the barmaid comes. Good evening, welcome to the three-legged donkey. What can I get you? I'm just I'm just waiting for this for the foghorn that um means he's trying to say something. But um <laughs> I guess I'll just say that I would like a water. We don't have water. We have I'll beer. Take, I'll take a beer at this point. I don't add the at this point, but I'll take a <laughs> beer. <laughs> mm, just a beer, no food, no wine, some bread maybe, cheese, come on. Um, what kind of food do you have? It's all shit. Out of character, I'm gonna kill Roland later. I'm just... I'm just gonna murder him. Come on, lady. You're making my job hard. Order some food, goddammit. What do you want? Chicken? Pork? Whatever. I'll have pork. Okay, let's see. Uh, want some ribs? Want some no. tongue? Some liver? Maybe the mm. pigtail? Oh. I think we I'll... have some pigtails level left over. I'll have rib. Uh, by the way, Vera, as um, you are starting to glance um, at your food, suddenly you hear, mm, Are you a magician, my dear? A magician? Mm, yes! And just as you're getting suspicious, all of a sudden he goes, Because whenever I look at you, everyone else disappears. That's right. Do what oh. must be done. <laughs> no, don't follow Benric rules of melting him. Please don't. No, no, no. I was saying, think of the cheesiest pickup lines you can. <laughs> <laughs> no. What's, what, I bet Geo's so playing along with this. He's just go and go and do it. Just do it. Do it. I bet you kiss girls, faggot. <laughs> I bet you kiss girls. <laughs> so, Vera, what are you doing after his amazing pickup line? I'm just saying. Oh, 
Well, thank you. And I'm telepathically begging Vendrick just to come over here and save me. I don't even care what he does at this point. Just, please. SOS, come on, help a mage out. He was could do so, but, uh, you know, the Geo wouldn't like it. Okay, um... Yeah, okay, well, I've, I've got you. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to swan on in. I'm gonna put on a much more high-pitched voice and I'm gonna act like he's cheating on me. <laughs> Jesus <And> Christ! <laughs> the, 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 more, the more that he tries to play it down, the louder I'm going to get. And I'm gonna start like pointing at nearby people, going, "Can you believe? Can you believe this? That's, the things that he's done uh, to me. Oh, I could list them for days. I just made an acting role. <laughs> <laughs> so as Venric is doing this, the young innocent lad is clearly getting frustrated by all this because this is all these all, all these accusations accusations against him are clear fucking slander. Yeah, that slander he says. Oh, it wasn't slander last night. Tell you what, that's just I'm really fucking hamming this up. Vera, go, go, go. Mm, oh dear. Sensing trouble and nothing he can do about it, the poor guy decides it's time to beat a hasty retreat and get the fuck yeah, out. Uh, you are, you either sit here and have more people publicly think that you're both gay and <laughs> ashamed about it, or you can just go. <laughs> Right, well, if he's, if he's retreating, I'm just going to stand there, put like put on an exaggerated smile, and then pop one arm out <laughs> for her to link and go, shall we go? Vera is just so relieved right now, she doesn't give a shit. She just links arms with you, and yeah, I guess you were walking out. <laughs> yep. Fuck it. I'm Tampati guessing... in the tavern size, very disappointed. A young man who was promised to meet a, meet a girl tonight and she stood him up. Did He's you very fail? sad about it. But Did you... too fucking bad, it bro. was too good to be true. So uh... the poor guy leaves dejected. And well... making a decision for his life. This is the last straw. He can't take any more. He may be a young, rich, beautiful, and with a giant cock. But clearly life is too hard for him, and he doesn't deserve to keep going like this. So, he takes Sorry, the power of celibacy and becomes like a man now, Never to ever uh, grace uh, the normal world of men Wait, hang on. and swingers with his presence. Wait, does he donate all his money to the shrine? Exactly. That's your piece of worship. We'll watch you get. Yep. So sadly, that young, beautiful, rich man with a big cock who was a virgin and was waiting for that special someone will never find him because he found God instead. Oh, okay. That's good. Well, at least he's doing something with his life. I thought it was gonna turn gay for a second there. Anyway. Oh, it always does with Ivo. It always does. Hey. Shut up. Hey. That's not true. <laughs> hey. He right, should, and uh, since she now... He should have been an advocate for himself. About saying, and, and since she can't escape now, linked arms, I'm gonna lead her back into the pub where we will finish our tricks. Where and Venric whispers to her, You owe me for this. I'll let him see some of my spells, he'll be over it in a second. I would like to have some time at the end of the day to practice. Well, I'm thinking that we might want to perform this deed at night. Good. Then, Vera, busy? Am I busy? Yeah. Well, I was going to get some pants for the theorem, but besides that, no. Good. So about this, and then I just stop going off about asking you every single detail I can think about for the uh, illusion spell you offered to teach me. I will explain everything. Literally just a non-stop series of questions, like writing down everything in my little notebook. Yes, I answer all of your questions as accurately as I can. Somewhere out there, you can imagine uh, Henri being super uh, squeamish about how cute Venric is right now. Oh, he's learning! Look at him, the cute little rascal. 
And then Vera's just sitting there completely emotionless as she just explains stuff. Also, it, I, uh, I came up with the thought about uh, five minutes after you offered it. But it would be fucking hilarious to, uh, to use it to be either Amri herself or any of the Noble Moon Masters. Also, um, don't worry about it, Paul. Just as long as you're here with us, that's good enough. <laughs> what kind of pants do I find that fit there in? No, no pants. Get them out of here. Be gone. <laughs> I will fucking. Anyway, if you're gonna you if to you're gonna buy him pants. some pants, you'd uh, probably wanna go into the uh, city. Unfortunately, that means going through the walls. And how exactly are you going to do that? Uh, are there any pants shops outside the walls? Well, I guess. Make uh, give me a roll, actually. What? What, what for? To find some pen shops. No, what do you want me to roll? Oh, uh, let's see. Why don't we go with investigation? Jokes Pick. on you, I'm better at that. Haha. -ha. Fuck. <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> Are there any clothes shops in general? There's gotta be at least one clothes shop. In the outskirts? Nope. Then how do people get their clothes? If they want uh, new clothes, they go to the city. You're yeah, in the but... outskirts. I try to find pants in the attic. Okay, uh, Romy perception. <laughs> you know what, your GM is feeling um, rather generous because you did help out the old lady, so if you straight up just asked her, she probably would have helped you anyway. So even though Iris is terrible at locating pants, the old woman finds you a nice, sturdy-looking pair. It's definitely been worn and seen better days, but eh, it will do the job. All right. Standing over. Gotta get. <laughs> standing gotta top. get Theron in these pants. Hang on, standing on the top floor. I'm gonna go view it and chuck him at her. Trying to nail so her in the head. Quest up, <laughs> you can update the quest in the journal instead of buy Theron pants. Now it's make Theron wear pants. No, it's fine. I know exactly what to do. I'm just gonna walk up to Theron and say, Theron, I have some pants for you. Please put these on. Why? Pants are unnecessary. Because I asked you to? And I'm your friend? But I don't need them. They're unnecessary. Look at me. This is... this is all streamlined. Pants will just get in the way. <laughs> Please? <laughs> Can I roll persuasion? <laughs> Go for it. Why six you? Oh shit! Vera with that feminine Vera, charm. Vera, Vera was just doing well, puppy eyes. As a GM, I yeah. cannot like in good conscience say that you suddenly, boom, you immediately agree with her and do as she asks. I say that you at least as a human being have a strong urge to indulge her this once. Whether I you just... do that is again entirely up to you. I just look at him dead in the, the eyes. Pants. I just look at him dead in the eyes and say, "Please." Puppy eyes. All right. He just he he just goes ahead and removes the loincloth and no! pants right in front of Vera. <laughs> oh my! He was just laughing her ass off while unveiling, just collapsing. <laughs> uh, you see that the shadowy hand reaches out uh, from Vera and it uh, covers her eyes. God. Constitution save. I I managed to not freak out. I'm still just standing there. Wait, right? What it, what is the opposed constitution rule for nudity? <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally just trying to train myself to be the best at composure. I was able to keep my composure this time. Single tear rolls down my face. Really? Because from your reaction, I don't think. No, that was my my reaction, not Vera's reaction. We are very different creatures. Yeah, Vera's reaction was to reflexively cast Reduce. Uh, by the way, uh, Virion, <laughs> as uh, you're changing from the back of the bar, the old barmaid, you hear a whistle. I can't whistle, so there you go. <laughs> How can you not whistle? I can't. Fairness, I can't whistle either, but that was a terrible attempt. <laughs> So okay. yeah, basically, apparently you have some admirers behind the bar. Who is just kind of standing there, pointedly staring at your face. Never seen that happen before in my bar, I guess there's a first for everything. For Congratulations, now. you completed the quest. Your reward is not having to be embarrassed when walking next to Furion. I mean, now he just walks, he still doesn't have a shirt, but yeah. 
Anyway, uh, midday is gonna start uh, rolling out soon, so if you guys wanna do some stuff today, now will probably be a good time to get started since uh, it's gonna take you a while to make it to the, to the inner city. Eventually you guys make it to the heart of the city, it's actually about uh, dinner time, it's starting to get late, the sun is gonna set soon. Are you guys gonna make your way to the Duke's mansion? I thought that's what we were doing. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. So, by the time you manage to locate where the mansion is, it's already night time. Uh, before you do anything else, Alicia, would you like to scout the area, I'm assuming? Yeah, basically I wanna scout sc it out and try to find an entry point. Well, I suppose... At least it looks at Iris, who I assume is still half asleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, I assume that Iris is not coming in since... a bit out of commission. Plus... It would be... Uh, I don't suppose you two ma uh, guys have any way to communicating, of communicating with us by the building, or do you? I have my, um... Then might I suggest you remain on lookout in case it looks like someone ha has noticed our entry so that you can warn us before we were, get ambushed. If I were invisible that would be easy. Okay. Yes. My offer to check things out still stands before you head in. Well, you're welcome to. Although I'm not entirely sure what you're looking for. Well, it might help narrow down where you guys need to look. Because we're looking for one specific thing. We don't know whether it's on a person in there or whether it's simply sitting around. Or anything else like that. I suppose. It would simply reduce the amount of time that you have to spend searching. Even if I don't find it, I can narrow it down. Okay. Um, am I able to kind of look around for a potential place on the second floor, or is my ten minutes up? Uh, it, no, you can actually minutes. do that. You have plenty of time. Like, uh, it doesn't okay. take you long to go through the mansion. It's not particularly big after all. As you make your way to the second uh, floor, you obviously see on one side of the stairway there are some rooms that are probably guest rooms, master chamber and all that stuff. On the right, however, you notice uh, a few different uh, rooms. One that are, uh, one's a library, the other one's a study. Eventually, you enter one of the rooms that seems to be like a small cabinet type of area that is used for personal uh, work. There seems to be a lot of documents on the desk and a lot of materials related to probably this Duke's work. And... Um, on the other side, there's a small display case, and inside is a very particular looking ring. Uh, even though you don't know exactly what you're looking for, considering how this ring is being kept, this is probably the item you're here for. Alright, um, do I And notice I'd say about any... that point, your oh. 10 minutes are probably up. Alright, that's fine, and I relay that information back to the others. Wait, was it just a single ring? That was in character, by the way. Uh, Firion, yes. you saw a single ring in a small display case behind the desk. Alright, yeah, I, I simply yeah, re re relay that information. That, it's, that it looks to be on the second floor. Uh, in the, what you said, looked like a study, there was... Uh, yes, on the, right on the right side of the stairway, a small study. Perhaps some interesting papers on the desk, and uh, the ring in a case behind the desk. I Sorry. thought he was handing these rings out to several people. How come there's a single ring in the display case? Maybe that's the original? Well then, wouldn't stealing that be rather conspicuous? Uh, keep in mind... Oh wait, never mind. Uh, your GM fucked up because it's been a while. Uh, Benny made sure to procure for you a quote-unquote replica of the ring. So Firion, you know exactly how it looks. So that is in fact the ring you're looking for. Oh, okay. But wait, okay, but, but uh, I seem to recall that he, in fact, he handed these rings out to several people. Uh, yes, from what Benny told you, like, he keeps a personal ring on himself, but he gives out copies to some of his uh, closest allies and friends. So maybe that ring in the display is the real deal, and maybe he has a few more stashed away somewhere. Okay. Benny gave us his, the fake that he showed us.
Yeah, Benny gave you a replica of the ring so you can swap it out so he will okay. never know if yeah. something's missing. So, well, except for the ring is most likely magical. Cough. You don't know that. Benny doesn't either. No, I like no. I saying we don't know that, but I like it's just, it's suspecting that the ring is magical because you know if it isn't magical, yeah. then why? Sadly, Furion's uh, ghost didn't have uh, enough time to gather you any more information. But he honestly did a very good job because you know exactly where your target is instead of you know spending half a, an hour rummaging through the yes. mansion. Uh, Alicia finds, you know, a good window that is. Somewhat close to the stairway, staircase, and you gets to work. Do that. Right then. And uh, you can easily open the window. Really? I don't even yes. need to like lockpick. Oh no, you need to lockpick it, but it, it takes you like five seconds. It's not really worth any effort. Uh, I mean, or, just well, a normal actually, I could actually go at it with a crowbar, no but I don't think like I can... it's not exactly locked. You just jim it from the outside. Yeah, like I was about to say, I do have a crowbar too, but I don't think that would be very quiet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right then, do I need to roll anything? Like, do I need to roll these two, or is it like that easy? No, you don't need to roll anything. It's literally a cakewalk for you. Cake? Okay, well. Well, Alicia opens the window, you know, with a slight frown, as, as if that was way too easy. <laughs> Alicia doesn't like it when it's easy. No, because when it's easy, it's a fucking trap. <laughs> Like, every time, it's a fucking trap. This is dark ambience. I don't like this. Well, you're sneaking into a mansion at night. What do you expect? I expect... Conga Vera expects music. a fucking party. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, Sorry. just break out the conga music. Uh, well, I suppose I rolled stealth. And the, uh... Right, so Alicia makes her way inside the mansion. I'm gonna assume that the invisible Vendrick and Vera follow her quickly after, correct? Yes. Uh, and I'm gonna assume that you probably close the window behind you, or...? Yes. Gotcha. Right, well, Alicia, you know uh, your way, you know where your target is, so what do you do? Well... First of all, I slowly approach the staircase to see if anyone is moving anywhere or, you know, if I can hear something. Perception. This is gonna be great. I'm gonna tank this, probably. Yep. <laughs> you don't hear anything out of the ordinary. Everything seems fine. Anyway, Alicia keeps moving slowly. You guys eventually make it up the stairs and everything seems to be in order on the second floor. As in, nobody has spotted you or done anything yet, apparently. Maybe. Well, Alicia motions for the other two to, like, wait there in case, uh, well, sleeping dude decides to wake up and go for a stroll. In which case it would be nice to have an advance warning. <laughs> Alright, I'll wait at the top of the stairs. And then she sneaks up off to, you know, the room where apparently in the ring is. You fail. Wow. It's gonna take you some time. Do you wanna try again? Uh, Alicia wants to try again because, like, as, as long as they're not, you know, telling Alicia to get the fuck out of Dodge, she is assuming that no one is approaching. Okay, go for it. Wow, like, hope. Alicia, you fail again, and at this point, your companions are probably starting to notice that you've been gone for quite a while. Looks like some of your skills are getting rusty, Alicia. You're gonna have to keep practicing. God fucking damn it. Do it again. Come on. You yeah, might fuck succeed it. this yeah, time. We whatever. Believe. Do it again. We're doing it again. I believe fuck in sake. you. I freaking... I wow. Like, it. I don't Jesus. Believe Are you kidding? Like, Vera can't cast uh, tele like telepathy at the same time as... Uh, oh, yeah, you're right. I'm just going right. to take a glance down the hallway and telepathically ask, Hey, are you okay? Uh... Alicia just thinks really loudly because she has no idea how the fuck to like do this. Like, I can't get the lock locked. <laughs> you can't lock the lock. Exactly. Question: If I used Mage Hand on the lock, would I be able to lock it? Uh, Prestidigitation will probably do the trick. I have that. You can do that. Yeah, that's 
I'm just I'll glance down oh, the hallway go down there to where do... she's doing the lock and just womp. Uh, as you cast uh, magic uh, inside the mansion, Vera, something happens that uh, was not noticeable until then. Wherever you place the ring, uh, Alicia, uh, both Vendrick and Vera can easily sense that there's faint magic coming from the ring. It uh, when you cast it magic nearby, it reverberated off the ring, given given you a hint that it's magical. Mm. The question Check. is, did anybody wearing that ring feel that? Nobody's wearing the ring. No, it's oh. in my pocket. Okay, well, I don't care then. Did I feel anything? Uh, not particularly. You in general, only the mages felt that. No. Uh, so Fair maybe enough. it's a good idea to, you know, check out what the ring is. Well. Is the lock locked now? Yes, it's locked. So I just okay. suddenly hear the lock, like, locking. Click. And I'll just telepathically say, there you go. Right, right. Thank you. Might I suggest we make ourselves scarce? You just feel approval. <laughs> As a few um... seconds passed, you notice that uh, Alicia's pocket is starting to glow ever slightly more and more. The runes on the side of the ring are starting to glow. Uh oh. Alicia uh, makes a way towards the Who has the highest face. perception here? Alicia, right? Uh, if you're talking passive, I am 19. Yeah. Uh, Alicia, you notice that the mansion is getting harder to see. Uh, even though there was no lights to begin with, at least some light was shining through the windows because, you know, the outside world is literally right there. However, yeah. it's getting darker in the mansion. Something seems to be blocking the light coming from outside. Oh, we need to move Fast. Okay, uh, how... Oh, quickly, quickly, quickly. Yeah, well, I'm out, out, out. moving, but how, like, how dark is it? It's becoming almost, uh, fully dark. There's almost no light coming in from the windows. Well, I mean, I... Soon, there's I, gonna be absolutely no light inside the mansion. I have both Skulker and dark vision, so, like, as long as it's no, not pitch black, I can probably see all right, it's, but, yeah, yeah it's by like... the looks of it, it's gonna be pitch black in a couple of seconds. Wait, uh, even seconds. if it is pitch seconds. black, then you would be with dark vision. If it's pitch black, um, you would be able to basically see like gray and outlines and stuff. Uh, how the fuck Wait, does that interact if... with uh, Skulker? Considering Skulker can see dim vision as if it was clear as day or dim light. I no like. Idea. I'm assuming dark vision okay, takes think precedence. Of it like, have you seen dark Chronicles Skulkers? of Riddick? Huh? you seen Chronicles of Riddick, because dark vision is essentially when he takes off the goggles. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Well, okay, so, so Skulker literally doesn't matter. Skulker is like, you can see oh, wait, no, wait, and clearer. Oh, right. No, never mind. Skulker, Skulker doesn't is... impose this, this, this means Dim Light doesn't impose disadvantage. That's the only thing yeah. it does. Never mind. Yeah, well, in the last case, Alicia makes, you know, moves quickly towards the staircase and down and towards the window, unless something interrupts her. I Nothing cannot interrupts see. You. By the time you make it uh, to the first floor, uh, down the first floor stairway, however, you notice that the mansion is now entirely covered in darkness. If there were windows, you don't see them anymore. All you uh, see around you is nothing but walls. There's no doors and no windows. Okay, but I can, I can, uh, I can see the outlines of Vendrick and Vera, right? Uh, I'm assuming so. In that case, yeah, basically, wait, then Vera just said that she can't see anything. Grayscale. Yeah, yeah, Alicia um, said, I Alicia said, Alicia. technically told everybody I cannot okay. see. Uh, considering now you're in pitch black darkness, the only source of light inside uh, the mansion is now actually coming from the runes on the ring. Unfortunately, it's not bright enough for you to be able to use it as a source of, uh, you know, light. You just can very easily make out the runes. Well, isn't that just great? Vera, I can I can see roughly where we are, although I cannot apparently not see the windows anymore. We can try the front well, door. I guess, well, or we can wait. Pieces. Just we can make our way out the window we came in. Uh, at this point, you uh, you hear uh, Joe pipe out. Uh, this isn't good. This mansion is giving me bad vibes right now. 
Um, might I suggest we take a look at the ring? It seems to consume magic. Perhaps we can find a way to use it in our favor to get out of here. Ah, uh, and they shall move. Well, takes the ring out of her pocket and holds it up before the mages. Yeah, fuck it. Um, Arcana, I'm guessing, to study it. Uh, this is demonology, so yeah, give me Arcana. Yeah. Let's see how fast you can do it. I told you the guy was a demon. Pretty slow, Sandy's seeing gonna seeing eat how up a little is. more of your precious time, and you're low on time right now. Whoops. Uh, good job, Alicia, by the way, you wasted the most time. <laughs> uh, Vendrick and Vera, you immediately recognize that this ring is not made by human hands. No shit. This is a demon ring. Demon made ring. Vendrick, you use your extended knowledge to quickly get some basic information from the ring. This is the ring of dawn. A simple ring encrusted with a blood shard. The small gem feeds on the blood of the wearer, which it takes forcefully through a small prickling thorn on the inside of the ring. The magic runes on the side of the ring depict a lesson learned from a tale as old as time. Originally forged during the Brood Wars, the ring was mass-produced and is credited to the resolution of the war. The ring serves to protect vampires from their greatest enemy, the sun. Thanks to this, the so-called Daywalkers deprived themselves of sleep and carried out assassinations in broad daylight. With no way to stop them, the vampires' eternal enemies surrendered themselves to slavery, thus ending the Brood Wars. While the magic item has long since outlived its usefulness, some vampires still hold on to it as a reminder of darker times and darker trials. Well, isn't that fucking great? Okay, so... <laughs> it's... Like I joked about. Wait, do you relay this information? Yeah, uh, I, I won't go into too much detail. What I'll say is, this ring is from a vampire war. Turns out we weren't wrong. Now, unless the mansion shifted, I have about a minute to leave. How about we go out through the front door? <laughs> like, now? I, I just, like, I've got a, a hold of your hand and I say, I put a hand up in front of my face and go, I can't see either. Uh, can I see where the front door is? There I is have no dancing front door. lights. Huh? Uh, suddenly, Alicia, you notice that, that the walls are starting to move. They're coming to life around you. And they start what? to take different shapes. Shadowy shapes. What the fuck? Um, can I tell if this is an illusion spell? This is definitely not an illusion. They seem to be uh, something similar to illusions, but they're definitely real. We have a problem, people. Apparently the walls are alive. Where, hey! What?